Welcome to the Crib Podcast. Hey, we got a really good show, people. Let's get started. Welcome to the Crib Podcast. I'm Greg Hislop, your host <laughs> on this January. Yeah, there's supposed to be a winter storm today because actually you're watching. The, this is being recorded on Wednesday. So uh, by the time it's up, I guess the winter storm will be over or it never happened or who knows what's going to happen or what, what, what. But hey, anyways, we're glad that you're here. So look, take a load off, get a drink, your favorite food. If you're eating dinner, that's fine. And just know that, you know, it's going to be a good 45 minutes for you just to hear a great and interesting story. Um, so, you know, COVID and such, uh, things are looking better. Uh, ICU numbers are progressively going down. And uh, the restriction of having people over has been uh, lifted to a degree. So you can have 10 people max at your place. Uh, so, you know, I will say this. I would say um, if you're comfortable thinking about getting some uh, in-person contact with somebody, you don't have to max your place out to 10, okay? But, you know, you know somebody that you, you know, you know, that you know you're gonna be safe, though, you know, everyone's pretty much all got Omicron. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, okay? So if you feel comfortable, take a, veil, take a veil of that. And if you don't, then you don't, you know what I mean? Um, but things are looking up and that's the thing you gotta focus on, guys. You got to focus on the positivity. There's so much negativity, but you got to focus on the positivity. And the positivity for me in particular is it's Super Bowl on February 13. Oh, man. Mm. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I used to play football back in the day. That's why my knees got messed up. <coughs> so. You know, look, here's the thing. If you're really into the game, you want to watch the game, fine. If you're not, then guess what's an excuse to like, you know, get some chicken wings or if you're vegan, vegan chicken wings and some drinks. And like I mentioned before, getting people together and such. So it's your opportunity to do that. So I say give that a try, right? Yeah, well, what do you got to lose? So without further ado, let's start with our guest. She... <laughs> What can I say about this person except, you know, she's such a determined person and, uh, and a person that's conquered adversity. And I always feel that she's the type of person that conquered adversity, but just the way that she did it, it was just above and beyond and even past it. And uh, we're going to find out a little bit more now. I want to introduce to everybody on the Crip Podcast. Yeah, Crip Podcast. Man, I can't even talk. <laughs> can't even talk <laughs> it's oh yeah i always <laughs> you know what i'm gonna say victoria but i'm gonna say her full name when i get her on yeah it's, it's victoria how's it going <laughs> okay i want to be politically correct <laughs> okay yeah. so because these days people are saying like um like <laughs> Their their meeting name or their married name, like what are you going by? I've gone by New Flow forever. Whenever I understand when when someone does call me out and then they say, "Oh, you know, um, Miss Garcia or what be it," I'm like, I understand because of course my husband's last name is Garcia, but I've just always been of the mindset of just I I didn't grow up. A Garcia, I love them to death. I love everything about my dear Garcia family. But I'm New Flow. That's who I grew up. So I, I just keep that. And um, But I understand by all means if you say Garcia. But my preference always is New Flow. Okay. Then I promise <laughs> I'm going to say New Flow. So let me... I let will me... not get offended. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So here I'm going to do. I'm going to redo this again. Ladies and okay. gentlemen, at the Crib Podcast, it's Victoria New Flow. Hey, so great to be here. Thank you, Greg, for inviting me. And that was a very nice intro. Thank you. Well, um, 
Well earned. Um, I got to tell you, I've known you for a good amount of years. And uh, let me say, like, uh, y you have always been, like, you just so organized, so positive, And, you know, just, I mean, I don't know. Like, yeah, like, honestly, you're just, like, you're a, you're a firecracker. You know what I mean? So, uh, I, I gotta ask before I ask, like go into the meat, the potatoes and everything, like, like what did you, did you grow up always that organized or is that something that developed in time? No, 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 no. It developed. It developed. No, I, I, I am not always very, very organized. And the good thing is that we have me on the smaller camera, so you cannot see my office right now. So uh, it, I, I, I cannot work in chaos. I can't. Um, I just can't keep my thoughts together because if not, everything takes me off of my center of what my focus is. So Jeff, um, I guess it's, I've just learned over the years that to be my best self, to be able to um, do my best work, I do need to be organized and I do have to be focused. I don't multitask. I can't multitask because that just takes me right off of what I'm doing. And it takes me a long time to get back. Like, you know, that, that um, I don't even remember what it's called exactly, but it's that time that it takes your brain to get back on task when you've gone off task, yeah. even to look at an email or to, uh, you know, check out Facebook or check out Instagram or whatever. That time for me is very long. And it's more than the average 15 minutes, which is the average for all people, right? So I just noticed that that does not serve me. It does not do me any good. So I just over time have learned that my best strategy is to stay on task and to stay organized. <laughs> and that's so true. And that is very, very, very true. And, uh, and that's a little lesson for you guys as well, too. If you're having a problem organizing yourself and everything, really work on your space and really uh, adopt that mentality that Victoria has. So let's get into it. So um, you've had brutal challenges in your life, okay? Um, yeah. A major challenge, actually. Would you like to tell us about it? Okay, well, we'll just do this last one. <laughs> so this last one <laughs> was, um, I was diagnosed with chondrosarcoma. Uh, yeah, don't worry if you don't know what that is. I didn't either when, uh, when I found out it's bone cancer. So the way that I assimilate it for anyone that I'm sharing it with, it's what Terry Fox had. So Terry Fox had the same uh, cancer, sarcoma, although his was the juvenile one, and that one is super, super serious. And it moves very quickly and it grows very quickly. Mine was the older version. <laughs> so I'm thankful for that. And, um, and mine was also caught early. Um, still left a lot of repercussions along the way with it, but it was still early. So I was very thankful um, to be in the great hands of even Dr. Wonder at Mount Sinai here in Toronto, um, which you know, just makes the success story so great, yet at the same time, it doesn't matter who's on your side or how quickly they find it. If you don't do the work yourself too, to make sure that you're going to be the best specimen for whoever's supposed to fix you, it's not going to work, right? It's not going to work. Yeah. And shout out to Mount Sinai and the doctors there. Like, oh, you wonderful. guys are making, we're gonna, we're always going to shout out, uh, any uh, good hospitals and medical professionals on this show as well, too, because um, uh, even when my mom had cancer, I mean, the, the, the what she had and everything, she went to Toronto Western and they took care of her. And, uh, you know, she's still with me today. So we're always going to show, you know what? We're always going to give one of these to our doctors and our hospitals so they take care of us so well. So continuing on. So, yeah. I mean, I just think about like, I think this is a stupid question to ask you how you felt. That's the most dumbest question on the planet. But no, but it's, yeah, go ahead. Not, it's not, it's not a dumb question though, right? Because we're all individuals at the end of the day and we all approach adversity differently, right? And it doesn't make something to be right or wrong. It just means it's different and it's what works for you. So 
my feeling initially of it, and I'm going to be completely honest with you, I was pissed. I was angry. I wasn't feeling sorry for myself or sad of, oh, no. I'm like, how did this happen? How on earth did this happen? I take care of myself. I am, I eat right. I do my exercises. I, I thought, you know, I was doing the best that I knew how to do at the time. And I thought that was good. Obviously wasn't, but, <laughs> but it was like, I, I was, I was angry and Unfortunately, that anger also builds resentment. And resentment is a nasty, nasty feeling that grows in a very hostile manner. So those feelings had to be dealt with before I started being able to figure out what am I going to do? How How is this going to work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So... What challenges did you have in, uh, in your recovery? So when um, the operation was extremely successful, and I mean, another day we can talk about like all the uh, woohoo stuff that I did. <laughs> or like Dr. Wonder would say to me all the time, he's like, I don't know what voodoo you're doing, but just keep doing it because it's working. <laughs> I like that he's called Dr. Wonder. <laughs> yeah, right? When I heard that he was going to, like, when they were going to um, refer me to him, I'm like, wonder, oh, this is already sounding better. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, that aside, that aside. Um, what was the question about? Uh, well, no, no, it's just, it's, it's just that. Challenges. Yeah, ch what challenges did you have, like? getting yourself uh, to, to recovery, like even from a physical standpoint, from a mental standpoint, like, you know, what did you yeah. do? Well, I couldn't walk, right? Because half of my pelvis is taken out. So I, I don't have half a pelvis. Um, so I had to learn how to walk again. I had to learn how to uh, use my gait, like on my foot. Surprising enough, I had to learn how to crawl again. And by learning how to crawl, it's, it's almost like you've got to go back to the beginnings of a baby. How do they um, build up the strength again in their body, in their legs, in their movement to be able to stand upright on their own? Mm -hmm. I had to do all that. I, ha I was crawling on my living room floor, forwards <laughs> and backwards. I've got the dogs on either side looking at me like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> Pulling at my bun, you know. <laughs> every time you slip, every time you slip, it's a. <laughs> oh my! <goodness. laughs> of course, you, we don't we don't swear on this podcast, so yeah, that's fine. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so it it's that kind of rudimentary um, beginnings that you've got to go back to. It, it it really was hard. It, it was it was a hard go, but you had to weigh it out. Like there's just going to be two pains in life, right? You're going to have the pain of discipline, right, or the pain of regret. So I would rather go through the pain of discipline and just knowing, okay, like you know, you know, darn, this is painful. I'm hurting. Then this and that. My back is killing my neck. Like everything starts hurting in different spots because your whole equilibrium is off without the pelvis, right? And all of the muscles that get held in on our hips, we don't, I didn't know really, to be honest with you, until it all, you know, became very clear. Um, so just having to, and, and my whole thing was always like, if I don't do this, what is going to be my result? Because if I just look at something ahead and say, okay, if I do this action, and you can do this in anything in life, it doesn't have to just be in this. But if I take this action, my most likely outcome is going to be X, Y, Z. You know, there's always a chance of three different things. Yeah. And if I choose this route, it's going to be A, B, C, right? Yeah. Those, are, those are kind of my worst case scenarios of either route that I decide to take, right? Yeah. So by choosing discipline and pain, 
I mean, it doesn't sound glamorous, that's for sure. I'm so thankful to where I am now. Oh, and you know what? There's another thing. Yeah. I made Dr. Wonder a promise before, um, way before the surgery, practically, I think, on our second visit. I said to him, I am going to be the best patient you have ever had. Thank you. Mark my words. And he was like, I'm like, no, I'm going to be the best. And Daniel was with me, and he's like, believe her, she is going to be your best. <laughs> I can imagine Dr. Wonder, and all of a sudden, he with it, you're like, everyone else, he's just like, you know, uh, everyone else, he's like, <laughs> right? But then when he sees you coming in here, first he hears, and then as a boxer, and then, you know, just the feeling of... <laughs> just like... Just he's like, this. It's going to be a pleasure to take care of Victoria. Am I right? Well, you know, I hope so. I, you know, if you believe it, it's not a lie. So I'm going to believe it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to mock people my truth, but yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like just. <laughs> oh, but let me just say, those wise words were George Costanza, right? So they're not my words; they're his words. I just, I just repeat them everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I got to share with you a memory. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's my memory. All right. So uh, this is my memory. Okay. I'm even going to talk to you guys. All right. So here's my memory of Victoria. We're at a convention. All right. And... I find that, I mean, she's gone through all this and, you know, this is like the really the first time we kind of seen her publicly and everything like, and I thought, okay, well, you know, she's going to be kind of sad and all that and everything. And then guess what? What do I see, Victoria? I see you fully decked out in a beautiful, I think mean, it was red, it was red Spanish. Blue, 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 blue. blue. As, 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 as you can tell, I'm not married, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> you're just colorblind. It's okay. I just, I, just see, I just see you this blue, blue special, and shining like a diamond. And I'm like, I just like, I'm just like, I'm like clapping in my head because I'm like, yes, like nobody, nobody, like this thing could not defeat you like i know you were going through hell. okay greg greg yeah. let me just so yeah, let me give yeah. you time let me get your timelines right oh yeah yeah <laughs> definitely get timelines right maybe i'm wrong because i haven't had the surgery just yet oh so i was just a month away right right a month away of having it happen right. um hardly anybody knew because i'm right. i also made a choice I made a choice not to to share my circumstances with um, with very many, you knew, you knew right, right away. But yeah, yeah. I would basically say my ride or die group right. knew, right? But nobody else knew outside of there, and it wasn't, um, and it wasn't like to be like, no, 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 you're not worthy. Are you kidding me? That's not it at all. It was that I knew that their loving, their loving demeanor wouldn't serve me because they would want to baby me and feel sorry for me and and be sad and i don't grow in sadness i i need i need the rah rah i need the encouragement but not like rah rah like you know you're last you're running late but last in the race and you know go go no 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 yeah. <laughs> i need it to be like when you're training like no no, no a harder set Next set's going to be harder. Yeah. The next one's going to be, okay, we measured it. We're up to here. Tomorrow we're going to go here. Like, that's the kind of rah-rah I'm talking about. So since I knew um, that that wasn't going to be what was coming towards me, when, if they knew, if they knew too soon, for me, that would end up being toxic because it would bring me down. Right. Right. Even though the intention was super amazing and it's out of love and kindness and caring, it wasn't going to serve me. So, uh, you know, why share something that's sad? Like, 
Yeah. I, yeah. I, I shared it just with the group who had to know kind of thing because yeah. um, life, my life was going to be very different after the surgery. Yeah. Um, we didn't know where anything, how it was exactly going to go. Yet, um, at the same time, at, at that convention, at that event, I was good. So, yeah. yeah, I'm getting dressed up. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy, you know, because I was living that day. That day, I was good. So that day is going to be good. <laughs> Man, like, <laughs> and I just, I, it, it's just phenomenal to me. Like, so... <laughs> Because I do remember that, and yeah, thanks for the correction on the thanks for the correction <laughs> on the timeline, Louie. Like, no, of course. <laughs> I mean, Victoria. <laughs> so, okay, I knew I was gonna screw up. I knew I was gonna screw up once. <laughs> it's all good. So, my nickname is so good. Don't worry. Yeah, don't worry. That's that that's that's her nickname. Okay, that's her nickname. So that's her nickname. So just anybody's wondering, that's her nickname. Only with her close friends. Don't get twisted. <laughs> don't get ambitious. All right. <laughs> that's it. Okay. So let's get past that and everything. Okay, so my next question is, is, you know, so what are you doing now? So this is like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I won't say post the unpleasantness, but what are you doing now that you're far more active and you could uh, do more? What are you doing now? Well, in reality, it's, not too much different from before because I'm not out of the woods. Let's just say it as right. it is. Um, and by not being out of the woods, not only are we talking about the cancer, because you know that you know we're, we're being very, very um, on top of, right? Right. right. But it, it's also physically. Like physically, I can't just be satisfied with um, with the minimum, yeah. right? Because as we all get older naturally, we start falling apart, naturally. So if on top of it, if you're starting already on the negative side of the number line, like if you're already in the left side of the zero, how far down are you gonna go? You know what I mean, as you get older? Yeah. And I have expectations of living a long time. At least that's what I want. That's my ideal, right? So it all comes to mindset because days, there's a lot of, there's, there's good days and there's a whole lot of bad days. And, and again, like I said, because the equilibrium is off, I have different pains all over my body, right? And, you know, you try to deal with all of them, but you, you know where the nucleus comes from. And, and then so you try to build the strength in that area. Right. So without getting into my whole routine, because that you're going to have like great on your next guest. He's going to be fantastic about helping you, um, you and, and all of your audience. Um, really get the idea of what it means to be physically strong without getting into that. I'll do my best. You know what? This, this, this is this is a thing where you have like you know good friends. Hey, eh? good friends, plug your show. Yeah. <laughs> good friends, good friends, plug the next episode for you. He's gonna be good. He's gonna be good. You're gonna enjoy the next one too. <laughs> um, but what it is is that every day you've got to be saying okay. I can figure this out. This is my problem now. This is my problem today. I can figure this out. Everything is figure outable, right? A lot of it starts up here. It is what it is. Your mindset will lead your body. If your mind is not in the right spot, nothing will follow. Nothing will. We were created beautifully, united, all in one. So there is a very strong mind body connection just to give you an example um of, of belief right because you have to believe right what what it is you're doing is right. going to be for your good right so in sense of belief um something very tangible to think about is that you're in the forest right and you it's a little bit like dusk it's already starting to get dark and you see something rattling and you see something like that and you're like oh my gosh is, is that a snake Oh my gosh, all of a sudden you're going to start sweating. Your heart's going to start palpitating. Your, your eyes are going to be like, you're going to be like maybe even shaking out of fear. Like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do or what be it. And, and as you get closer or somebody else comes along and you feel a little bit more confident to see what that is, it's a stick. But your belief 
was that it was a snake. Yeah. And look at the connection. Your body went into action, right? Your heart started palpitating to be able to give you enough oxygen and energy to run for safety, right? Right. You started sick. You you maybe even became nauseous because your stomach wanted to evacuate what it's got because it's going to need all its energy to get you to safety. So your body will always work. We've been created beautifully. Your body will always work in your favor based on your belief. So you need to believe. And in order to believe, you need to educate yourself. And you need to find knowledge. And you need to experiment. And you need to try things. You can't just read, right? Because our brains are analytical. Yet at the same time, the only way that things and the neurons fuse is through action. Yeah. So you need to do, right? And sometimes right. what you do will be great. And sometimes all you do is like, that didn't work. Okay, next. You know, yeah. what's the next thing I'm going to try? I gave it an honest go. It didn't work. I'm going to try something else. But everything is figure outable. And when you start with that, Belief that you can figure this out. You were given an amazing brain that you are capable of making yourself better with the help of others, not just on yourself. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let me put that out there. Yeah, yeah. Any of this by myself? No, I've had a team of experts. I've had, no, 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 no. I didn't do any of this by myself. But you have to go and find those experts. And you need to listen to those experts and do what those experts tell you to do, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's yep. where it, it really comes down to that action, action, action. You know what? That's, that's, so, that's so true because especially these days, like people, people, you know, don't really sometimes don't want to listen and everything. And so, you know, I, so – and I'm looking at the camera right now because we're talking to the audience. I want I want you to think of this. What advice do you have for someone that is going through a difficulty? It's a question I always ask on my podcast. So what advice do you have for them if they're going through some form of a difficulty? It could be what you're going through. It could be something more. It could be something less. What advice do you have for them, Victoria? Okay. So one I would say when you learn something new or you learn something or someone gives you advice that's worked for them, let's just say so it's a viable piece of advice, don't say to yourself right away, oh, I know that already. Ask yourself instead, how could that work for me? Because by saying I know that already, you're locking, all, you're locking yourself out of being able to learn anything from that piece of advice, from that book, from that research, from that piece of literature, you're cutting yourself off right there. So you're not going to get any gains from there. The second thing that um, usually trips um, people up is when they say to themselves, um, that won't work for me. I'm, I'm really glad that worked for you, but that won't work for me. No, I'm different. I'm, I'm very special. I'm... And you know what? Granted, yes, of course you're special. I'm not going to say you're not. But again, it's changing that question from saying, that won't work for me, to, hmm, I'm curious. How could that work for me? Right? I'm not saying it's going to work exactly the same way it works for you, but success leaves clues, right? So since it worked for you, I'm different from you, but how could that work for me? So if you really bring things down to those two elements right there of being able to say, what can I learn from this? And the second one being, how can that work for me? Which in general is just being curious, asking why or, or how, like in the second one. You know what? You don't know what you're going to find out. Give it a try. Nothing changes if nothing changes, right? Yeah. So you got to change something. So give it a try. You know what's so weird? That's kind of in connection with this show. 
Because this show, by giving your experience, mm -hmm. somebody can say, huh, I wonder if that can work for me. Right. Wow. And you know what? Mm. Maybe it won't. Maybe it won't. But you gave it a try. You gave it an honest go. And what ends up happening, it's, it's wonderful how these things happen in life, is that that one didn't work, but this one, by doing this, you were introduced to this person, and they're doing this specialty, which, you know, not in all elements work, but they know this other person. It's this whole six degrees with, without being six degrees. <laughs> but you know what I mean? <laughs> but you will be led to where you need to go. You don't know. It's like when people say, oh, I'm going on Route 66. I'm going to like do the whole, the whole highway. It gets really long when you're going through the desert in that section. But if you go by gas station to gas station to gas station, before you know it, you're looking over the Pacific. You know what I mean? Like you got there. Yeah. But, but it's, it's taking those little bits and saying, okay, I don't really know what's going to happen. Um, I don't know, four gas stations from here. Let's just say like a hundred miles from here. Like if we're going to be American in all miles. <laughs> if we're, if we're gonna if we're gonna use uh, non-Canadian <laughs> metrics, <laughs> well, because when you're down there, they're gonna go kilometers. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> applicable. So, we'll let it go. It's applicable. <laughs> yeah. So with those miles, you you don't know what's going to happen down at those miles, but I'm pretty much in control from what's going to happen from here to that next gas station. And then it's not fearful. Then I can try it. I'm not scared to make that leap because it's not so scary. It's just the next gas station. You know what I mean? Wow. <laughs> you know what? Okay. Here's the deal. Here's what I'm gonna do. This is I'm not I'm not you know I'm not a crystal ball kind of weirdo or whatever no. But yeah. you and I are going to, you're going to be a co-host on this show. That's what's going to go down. Let me tell you something. That's you, That's what's going to go down. I would even say further that you should have your own podcast. I'm going to, I mean, what did I just, wait, hold on, I'm switching my camera. I'm switching my camera. What did I just do? Did I just create my own competition? Back to her. You, <laughs> you know what? I don't care. I don't care. I love you. I love you, Victoria. Uh -huh. I think you, you, you're so inspirational. Um, so you you uh, make your uh, own products, no? Oh, I do. Yes. So um, it's funny because Einstein has a quote that he says, creativity is intelligence having fun. And I'm always, I, I'm very locked into my head a lot. <laughs> and so oh. even for me, like even saying this and having this conversation with you and your viewers is therapy for me. Because it just reminds me, yes, get out of your head and do. Because it's so easy to just say, no, 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 it's okay, no, no, you know, whatever. Like, but it, you got to take the leap. And then you kind of go, oh, it wasn't so bad. I didn't die. You know, I'm, I'm not bleeding. It's all good, right? So the whole idea, okay, yeah. So I started when, okay, so the whole pandemic started, yeah. right? You know, and um, everyone was wearing masks. So I started making these little maps, right? And just for me, and then I was being stopped on the street about mm -hmm. these maps. And I was like, I, really? You like them? Oh, okay. I was very surprised by the whole thing, but I thought, okay, whatever. So then I um, I called them Wonder Masks. I started making them, and all proceeds went to Mount Sinai to be specifically for Dr. Wonder's uh, sarcoma unit. Mm -hmm. And uh, $10,000. And that was to everyone. Yes. You know what? Who that right there is also the power of belief because you know what my first goal was five hundred dollars and then i said okay i'm gonna be crazy i'm gonna be crazy and put out there a thousand dollars and then daniel says to me darling put five and i'm like i can't put five thousand dollars down in this go fund me and say that you know and not and never reach that goal like talk about loser he's like no no put it down write it down and you're gonna see we wrote that down and it just started happening right it's all about 
making that first leap about saying, okay, okay, let's do this. Because really, at the end of the day, what's the worst thing that can happen? Okay, I failed. I didn't make the $5,000 worth of whatever, right? So no one got hurt at the end of the day. But still, it was just kind of like that pride thing. Yeah. And and then when we hit five, I'm like, okay, let's just always be like, you know, five was the goal and now we're over. Like, yay. <laughs> and, and then it is like, no, now you got to put 10. Oh my God, no, not yet. That's Daniel to a T, everybody, by the way. That's Daniel to a T, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so I did. So I put down the 10, and we reached it. I was having dinner with my lovely girlfriend, Paula, and the donation came in. I looked at my phone. I was like, oh, my God, Paula, we just hit. It was, it was incredible. Like, and to be able to have that moment, like not by myself, I'm having dinner with a girl that I love to death. Shout out to Paula. And, oh, absolutely. A thousand, thousand percent, my yeah. girl. Yeah. And to be able to share that even, that, that moment of that ding, because that's the only notification that I have on my phone. Because yeah. I cannot stand notifications. Again, remember squirrel, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if you call me, believe me, I will not pick up the phone. And, uh, <laughs> because I will not know that it was ringing. <laughs> Old school. <laughs> oh, I can't do it. I can't. No. I'll look at it when I have a chance to look at it. And that was the only notification that was on there. Just because that was what was important to me. Is, is that reaching that goal. And when it came in. I couldn't even believe it. I was just, but having that chance to have it come in and be with people that I love at the same time as it was happening, it was, it was, it was, it was strong. It was, it was, it was meaningful. Man, <laughs> that's so awesome. Let me tell you something. Um, I feel this is kind of a special one. I feel this is like a really special episode. Like everyone's, I, don't get me wrong. Everyone's episode has been great. Everyone's episode has been mm -hmm. great and everything. I do, I do like this one because um, it shows more the organizational aspect of overcoming, overcoming your challenges, which I, which I love. Yeah. And um, it, it's the process. It's a thought process. It doesn't just happen like that. You got to understand it. You, you got to plan it and you got to stick to the plan. Actually, Leah was very good about it. Leah, your earlier guest, she did yeah. share about the idea of having the goals and having them be measurable. Like I have my watch on all the time and I measure and I keep track. I weigh myself every day. I know I'm one of those. Um, <laughs> but, and, and it's not for any other reason that I have to know, am I making progress or am I going backwards? And if I went backwards, like I had a weekend maybe that I had too many carbs or what be it. Okay, it is what it is. But it's not going to get worse from here. I caught it at this point. You know, I gained the pound and a half or the two pounds. Because those, as you get older, those pounds become five and then become ten. And then become, like, you know, they go fast. Really, really fast they get up. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, oh, my gosh, right? Like, no, it's incredible how fast those, those pounds come up. So if I catch them early, then I can act accordingly. Right? So it's knowledge is power. Yes, but not exactly because actionable knowledge is true power, right? So it's getting out of your head and saying, okay, I have the data. I have, I have the results here. I have like, you know, my, it's not a spreadsheet, but you know what I mean? It's right. like, you know, I think, and I'm seeing here, it's, it's black and white, very clear. You know, I gained weight or I, you know, I lost muscle mass or, you know, whatever, whatever it is that I'm um, marking. I got to act on it because remember, there's only two pains, regret or discipline. That's it. <laughs> Man, <laughs> you know what? Let me let do me, my drop. Let me, take. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you, Victoria Newfalo, everybody. So before we let you go, uh, so what's the website for Wonder Mass? Okay, so it's not Wonder Mass anymore. Okay. So now... Well, it's going to be um, Warmly Victoria because now it's all in I didn't even get into my whole thing. But anyway, it's Warmly Victoria.
Victoria.com. Um, but it's not exactly set up just yet. I, I know this sounds ridiculous, but I will give you all the details. It's almost at 100% because you made me move my booty mm-hmm. and get moving while yeah. we were having this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's almost 100 I mean, it's up, but it's on vacation. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I put it on vacation because I don't have all the policies in there just yet. Right. So it, it's all, you made me do it. Yep. You made me actually open the Etsy store. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, again, but see, look at this. It was in my head. It was in my head. Everyone is telling me, open up that Etsy shop. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to. I'm going to. And then we had to do this. And you said, open it because it's Wednesday. And I'm like, okay. Okay. I got to say to open it. Okay. I'm going to do it. And I did. Good. I did it's like vacation. Well, <laughs> here, well, here's what I'm going to do. You're going to send okay. me the link. I'm going to put the link in the description okay. on this video. Okay. Thank and you. then when, Bye. then, so everyone will have it. And then when you're fully up and running, people will be able to go to it and then they'll be able to, you know, make their purchases and such. Right. Thank um, you. Thank I gotta you. say, thank you so much for uh, spending this time with uh, just not myself, but with like us, you know, on the podcast and, um, Man, I'm looking forward to like <laughs> us sitting down, having a drink, and eating some food. Because I mean, you're uh-huh. an amazing cook. We- like, I mean, just ugh. like, and you're an amazing company and amazing cook. Like, let's get that out there too. That was a leading question. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah, so. <laughs> you knew it was a hook, and I went like, I just hooked on. <laughs> right there, right there. <laughs> And I, I'm talking, I just went, uh, uh, I took the hook. <laughs> Do it old school. <laughs> Victoria, thank you so much. Oh, All right. my, I hope this was like valuable to some of your viewers, or at least one viewer, just one viewer who knows that you can figure it out. Everything is figure outable. It really, really is. And it just it, surround yourself by people who think that same way. You got it. You got this. Perfect. Victoria Dufalo, everybody. <laughs> Woo! <sighs> All right, guys. So, whew, I mean, that's a lot of tools in your tool chest to help you guys out. And um, you know what? Uh, this is the reason why I do this podcast. And, uh, and uh, you know, hell, to be honest, I'm even feeling inspired. So, Hey guys, hope you have a great night. Um, you know, things are uh, are loosening up in regards to restrictions and such. So I know people feel really discouraged to make plans, but make your plans. Worst comes to worst, you know, something happens, you can't. But if you have those plans there, we have something to look forward to. So make those plans, like, and subscribe. We're trying to get to 100 subscribers, but after talking to Victoria, <laughs> I'm going for a thousand subscribers, everybody. Let's go! Yeah, a thousand. Let's go! A thousand subs! I'm going for a thousand subs! <laughs> there you go. All right, guys. So uh that's gonna be it for us. This is the Crip Podcast. We'll see you next time. Rolling the outro. Yeah.